And welcome back. Well, many people leave the church of their youth to find a faith with a better fit. Chris Ha made such a journey, leaving Catholicism for a Protestant megachurch, only to return to his religious roots later. He writes about it in his book, From Willow Creek to Sacred Heart. And Chris joins me now from Philadelphia. Welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. Well, it's great to have you. So, Chris, what drew you away from the Catholic Church? Well, you know, a lot of the things that um, drew, draw people away from it today, um, a sense of having lost the meaningfulness of the liturgy and the ritual, having felt like it, it doesn't mean much to them anymore. And uh, so our family, you know, kind of drifted like many people did today. Yeah, so what then brought you to something like Willow Creek? Because Willow Creek is a huge megachurch. Uh, yeah. It's like 10,000 members or something like that, or 20,000 members. Um, huge mega church evangelical protestant what drew you there well it, willow creek is emphasizing a lot of the things that have been lost in many of the liturgical churches and and it's largely about redirecting people's minds towards the message of the bible of the gospels reading it very closely studying it deeply so it's it's largely about trying to get into the meaningfulness of christianity for us today mm -hmm. well something obviously was missing what was that well, um, you know, I found that Willow Creek, one of the things that was uh, really appealing to me when I started, you know, leaving that sphere and going out to places like Camden was I ran into a Catholic church and it was in the middle of a very violent and dangerous city and, and I began to see the rituals and liturgies of the Catholic Mass um, in light of their commentary on violence mm -hmm. and getting communities together and uh, kind of transform our relationship to violence on the streets. So that was one of the things that certainly is not emphasized at places like Willow, like the rituals and liturgies that are kind of ancient in the church. Yeah, so you, in a sense you, you felt the calling for the liturgy, for the sort of ritual that, that uh, you had been missing, and, and, and that was important to you? Well, it was kind of like a, a two two-way path for me or a, or a two-rail path like a train because largely actually I, I wanted to move into Camden, New Jersey to help um, you know revitalize a very hurting it's uh, it's a very violent dangerous city and and actually Willow Creek propelled me to have enough faith and hope and love to go to a place like that and help transform it and moving there I found uh, a small little Catholic church that was right in the middle of a very abandoned and hurting neighborhood and so I struck up a partnership with them and began to renew my connection with this uh, church that I had basically given up on. You know, it's interesting you mentioned Camden, but well, many people may not realize in the rest of the part of the country is Camden has one of the highest murder and crime rates in the country. It is it is very, very, very dangerous place. And how is it for you living there? Well, it's, it's very difficult at times. I, I moved into an abandoned crack house and renovated it. I learned how to become a carpenter by moving into a place that needed the skills of, you know, renovation. So um, it can be very difficult. There's, you know, gunshots down the street. There's kids that have been uh, caught by passing stray bullets. And uh, it's, a, it's a very difficult place. There's a lot of drug dealing and prostitution. But... I think, uh, you know, sometimes in order to improve places like that, we have to uh, sort of challenge our fearfulness, uh, that sense of needing to disengage for mm -hmm. our safety, but maybe to move forward in a sort of sacrificial way. You know, the, the community is an incredible space. We, I think we have a photo of you um, uh, carrying a cross in, the, uh, in Camden. What is this about, you carrying this cross? Right. Well, many Christians are familiar with the ritual known as the Stations of the Cross. And in those, through the many different steps and uh, events during Jesus' crucifixion, people walk around and, and remember and read those passages and say prayers. But with Sacred Heart, having a special connection with a very hurting neighborhood, they actually do the Stations of the Cross on Good Friday at all of the places where somebody has been murdered in the neighborhood. And so we connect with the, the sense of ongoing cycle of violence that's been alive for far too long on our planet. It you know, killed Jesus, and, it, and it's a cycle that's still alive today. And so the Stations of the Cross is a way for us to pray with 
and be sympathetic with uh, those who have been hurt by uh, this, you know, terrible cycle. You know, what really was the turning point for you in going to Sacred Heart, going to the Catholicism, and, and why does this offer you so much more than, let's say, a Protestant church? Well, it took me a few years to realize that um, when a priest hands you this wafer of bread, they call it the host. And actually, in Latin, it means the victim. And starting to learn about the ritual of the Mass as as a, as a convergence upon and worshiping of the victim, it made so much more sense being in the context of Camden for myself because we're always surrounded by the troubles and, and, um, and the laments of people that have been victimized. And so to me, the Mass takes on this whole new shape when it has this sacramental physical connection with the victims of this world. And so I also found it very profound, uh, you know, that so many of the rituals of the Catholic Mass are doing what so much of humanity all throughout history, even before Catholicism, um, have appreciated the celebration of the seasons. Like the fall time now, we celebrate mm -hmm. all of the saints who have gone before us. And I really love those kinds of uh, patterns and rituals and rhythms of life. You know, um, um, uh, Chris, there was a comment from J.D. Um, LaPointe. And he says, Does the, do you foresee the day when Catholic and Protestant churches might one day reunify under uh, one banner, under the name of Christian? Mm -hmm. um, you certainly have tasted both worlds, and mm -hmm. what do you think? Well, it's very encouraging to know that actually over the last 40 years, uh, groups like Lutherans and Catholics have been meeting to try to readdress the uh, divisions of the Reformation. Era and actually, Catholics and Lutherans have declared that one of the biggest issues over faith and works is actually no longer a working point of division between the two parties. And um, I also think it's one of the temptations today is to say, well, let's give up on Protestant and Catholic and go into this neutral party of just mere Christian. Mm -hmm. But it, that would be kind of like pretending like you don't have an accent. Everybody has a history and an angle that they view it from. And that was one of the challenges I found at Willow Creek was they call themselves non-denominational, which in effect really means that they're Protestant evangelical. So I, don't, I think there's a lot of hope for people reuniting the Christian tradition. Mm -hmm. But I think it'll be very difficult, if not impossible, to do it through this lens of being nearly neutral. Yeah. I want to thank you so much. Mm -hmm. The book uh, is called... Um from Willow Creek to Sacred Heart, author is Chris Haw. Thank you so much for, for joining us today on A Spirit of Debate. A lot to think about. Thank you for having me. All righty.